So we got a new project here going. Uh, I'm going to put a tack, uh, tachometer on the Lance Lathe. Uh, when you have a VFD on something, uh, it's well uh, worth it to uh, put a tack on because you can variable speed. So it's kind of nice to know what kind of RPMs you're turning, whether it's on a mill or lathe or uh, drill press, you know, anything uh, uh, that you could. Variable speed, it's kind of fun having a tack, so you do know what it, it's turning. You can calculate your feet per minute uh, for your feed rates and uh, uh, for your, you know, removal rates and things like that. So this is what I'm doing. Uh, so I got this little uh, junction box. It was brand new, really. Uh, it, it's it's kind of old, but it's brand. it was brand new. Let's see here. Let me get this thing situated so uh, I bought a tachometer just like I did for the other equipment uh, off of eBay you know it's like 15 bucks they're a Hall effect type tread uh, tachometers uh, they come with the the display and the sensor and that's about it not much else uh, uh, I'll show you the the wiring I haven't I have not finished up uh, wiring on the internals of the box and uh, I'll set the camera up. We'll we'll get that done, and uh, we'll plug it in and see how it goes. So uh, let me uh, change a few things. So I I put the I mounted the display in the panel, obviously in this box, and I put an on-off switch. And uh, it's just sitting here right now. It's gonna it's gonna go here. I'm not sure how I'm gonna mount it. I really don't want to put any extra holes. In the uh, any extra holes here on the top of the uh, this this part of the housing, this housing just covers the pulleys and the gears uh, there. At the bottom part, you know, swings out. So you can see here's the spindle. There was already two holes here. These are tapped quarter twenty in the lathe. Um, so I'll show you a little bracket I had. I had four of them. I don't know where I got them. What they came out of. But I had these four little heavy-duty brackets, and I just uh, modified a couple holes, and bolted it in, and mounted it in there. I'll I'll get the. Let's see here. This this light's probably not bright enough, but it might be. Let me uh, let me check the display here. Yeah. This light's kind of dying, but you can see there how it's kind of in there and then the pulley is what you see there and you can see the magnet has a little blue dot on it I epoxied the magnet to the uh, pulley uh, that's the pulley's right on the spindle so it all turns the same speed so we'll get things uh, a little bit set up here and uh, we'll get the wiring done inside we'll we'll hook her up and uh, see how she goes. The unit operates. I did uh, test it on the bench just to make sure uh, the unit does work. So we'll just hopefully we'll read the right RPMs. Uh, the other ones have worked uh, pretty good. So we'll uh, get her set up. All right, I'm kind of set up here. Uh, I don't guarantee anything. Okay, I'm ready to kind of get some soldering done here and get this thing wired. Uh, I do have a little drawing that I made up. Um, there. It's not too technical. Um, Alright, so engineers are the worst, okay, at certain things. Doing things for themselves, number one. <laughs> um, uh, I used to, on the ships, uh, I did a lot of automation work, uh, off, an awful lot. Uh, <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, I um, assisted, I was one of the engineers, I should say, but I, what I did is I supervised the re-automation of three, three of our ships that we had, and they were steamships. The first one uh, uh, I did was the very first steamship in the world uh, to have to be able to go to an unattended engine room 
Um, so, uh, you know, overnight, we had nobody down there type of thing. It was the very first one in the world. Uh, so that was a big deal, uh, you know, for st especially a steamship. Um, they're way, way more, you know, um, intensive as far as um, automation goes uh, compared to a diesel ship. Uh, you know, you just like, uh, you know, you start an engine and it runs, right? Well, a uh, steamship is a much more of a balance of the balance of things so everything's operates in a balance uh, so uh, together so it needs to be monitored well we we installed uh, what was called a network 90 system and uh, it worked absolutely wonderful uh, as far as uh, you know how it did its, how it did it did its job you know but um, Anyway, you know, so uh, yeah, so I've done uh, I've done a lot of and uh, I've done a lot of electrical work. Uh, I used to work for my father-in-law. He was an electrical contractor, but you know, when you do things for yourself, you just usually don't do things the same. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Anyway, so uh, let's see what we can do here without knocking the camera over. Uh, what can we do? So this is going to be the the power switch. So I'm just kind of, what I'm doing here is I'm pre-soldering these lugs, uh, wetting them up here. So it makes it a little easier and um, it's called tinning, I guess you really technically it's called tinning. So I'm going to tin these wire ends also. Uh, this one's just going to be crimped, but I'm going to tin it anyway. And I'm going to tin the tin the other ones on the other end. This is the power, the incoming 110 volt power. So, uh, when for the power supply, so I have this is a, I think it was a printer charger from Can a Canon printer charger. The 120 volts in and puts out DC at 8.4 volts. You know, it's a inline kind of power deal. It's not a wall wart. Uh, these are little. These type here for this type of project are a little easier because they have a they have two cords, so you you can place it inside of something and use it as a power supply. I love recycling stuff and putting things to good use. I have a box full of this type of stuff, of these type of things. I save them all. Uh, every once in a while I go through and I weed out the ones I don't want and I throw them away, but I have a box full. Uh, varies in voltage outputs from like, you know, one, one and a half volts up to over 12 volts, 50, 18 volts or something. I have some. So y you'd be surprised after a while you accumulate these things and uh, they're, they, you can put them to good use, I should say. So we're gonna do the power, power side here first, so. Let's see if we can. Uh, I probably should have bent these tabs a little bit, make it a little easier. There's a little more room. This is just a single pole switch. So I'm only um, only you know switching the hot hot lead. I'm not going to switch the neutral. So for the neutral, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to butt splice that together with a crimp butt butt splice.
So the neutral is just butt spliced and then we're switching the hot lead. Well, the power, the AC power is done. So what we're gonna do is the, this is the, this is the DC power, uh, the other end of the power supply here. And uh, we're gonna get that hooked up this little plug in the back of the circuit board there we can kind of so we can kind of switch flip that out of the way actually and just work with this stuff so uh, yeah the red one is the uh, positive we'll do that first uh, and then this these here uh, used if sometimes they're not marked but this one is marked it has a red stripe on it and that is the positive side of the output of the uh, little power supply. Red down to brown. So there, this is the lead uh, for the sensor. Um, blue, brown, and black. So the little tag on the sensor is in Japanese or yeah it's in Japanese I don't think it might well you know it might be Chinese I don't know anyway it's probably Chinese but uh, but it's a, it's a symboled a uh, little diet little tiny diagram but they do, I don't I have no idea what their what their colors are because I can't read Chinese but I've done this before and usually the black is the negative so we, 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 we called it the negative. And then, you know, if they use standard electrical uh, 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 convention, you know, as far as color coding. <laughs> so now we had these other two. Now these go, one's a positive, goes positive, and one is the return from your uh, sensor, uh, the pickup. Um, and since it's it, it's positive, either one is positive. They're both positive. So I'm safe when I hooked it up on the bench. If I had these backwards, it really didn't matter. But it didn't work, you know, if it's backwards. So well, that's what I did. So I tried it. Well, the, actually, well, I got it right the first time, but but um, it uh, it just worked out great, right? So uh, the brown ones end up being the positive. Uh, side and the black is the negative and the blue is their sensor that's your input so that so the like I said the brown one is the positive so we're gonna hook all these together then what we're gonna do is we're gonna slip a piece of uh, heat shrink over them and and so they're uh, insulated right but I'm gonna have to strip a little bit here yeah, yeah. We're gonna split. We're gonna strip some of this off here, since they've already they already did that part. So it's like you're kind of stuck there. So I, I just want a little more wire length. So I'm very gently splitting this. So to get a little more wire length. So we're gonna be uh, oops, drop the wire here. Okay, so you probably couldn't hear me because my microphone was hanging down. Um, well, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, you could have heard me. Heard me. Otherwise, I have to redo everything. So we're gonna get the positive there, the uh, red lead here, and the brown lead here. I'm not going to use it. I'm not using a terminal strip or anything. It's just, you know, it's it's just a lot easier sometimes just to solder them together, and it's very good connection.
And I'm doing this on the lathe. I'm over here on the lathe, so it's a little bit tricky, I guess. All right. And then we're going to take the uh, black black and black so we're going to take the black from here the black from there and the black from here double check on my drawing so yeah like I said before, you get kind of stupid sometimes when you're doing videos. So. I don't want to do this from all over memory. And it's going to be yellow and blue. Pretty simple. It's the only ones left. There you go. Yeah, essentially that is everything. It's my phone. And we're going to cut some of this uh, shrink tube. We're going to slip little pieces of shrink tube over it. Actually, I'm going to see what's in this jar here. Right? I have some more, more smaller stuff. You just leave it out, leave it out, hang out past because when it shrinks up, it, you know. And since I didn't grab my heat gun, I have to go get that. We'll just get all these together, all these. Yeah, I'm going to have to use a little bigger on that one. Yeah, leave it out past the end of the wires. So I'm going to use the red on that one too. Now, that way when I heat them all, they, uh, I'll do them all at once. Uh, if you try to do, do one and then you do the other one, sometimes you can get all cabobulated. It's, it's a lot easier to just do them all. They all shrink up. Boom, done. Okay, got the heat gun. This will be a little noisy. So we get those in the positions. You know, like quarter inch out past those wire ends. Sometimes you can pinch them together while they're still hot. Just pinch those ends. This is electrically insulated. I'm not trying to make it waterproof or anything like that. It's... Okay.
Alrighty, we, uh, okay, so we pre pre preserved this plug on there. We're gonna plug that in there. We're just gonna flip this up here. Make sure things aren't touching anything. We're gonna get the uh, little cord. Plugged in. See, can you see what I'm doing? I guess so. Yeah, plugged in. Let's turn the switch on. And it didn't work. Oh, well, you got to plug the readout in. That would help. There we go. See, you get stupid. Plugged in. The readouts have come on. There we go. Can you see that? It's a blue readout. I think that's kind of cool. I deviated from the norm of the reds. Went to the blue. I got this thing in neutral. I'm just going to spin the chuck. And it does nothing. Now, it's basically just probably one of two things. Well, it could be more than one of two. The magnet's not close enough to the sensor, so I can adjust the sensor in and out, get that a little closer. The magnet is backwards. Now, I thought I had it right way because I tested to make sure it's uh the right the polarity on the thing to make sure it worked properly uh because it only works one way and if i glued it on uh wrong then i screwed it up and uh well no let's see in neutral it doesn't do that Oh, there we go. I might have to turn it, actually turn the lathe on. No, the pulley wasn't turning. When you, yeah, when it's in neutral, neutral, it doesn't do anything. So let's, uh, I'm going to turn the lathe on. There we go, huh? That's reverse, actually. Now we'll go forward. Boy, that was close. Works perfect. That's what we like to see. Always perfect. There, that's that's for Ray. Ray Goff there. Perfect. <laughs> anyway. Pretty happy, we'll put her together, uh, finish buttoning her up here. Turn it off. Turn it on. Sweet. And now I can just crank it up with the VFD. Let's see, I think, uh, what gear we're in? We're in. That's, uh, that's actually pretty close to what I was measuring. Uh, 700 when I did my tack, uh, my strobe tack. I'll have to, we'll double check it. We'll do some comparison here after I get it buttoned up. So, uh, you know, pre pretty, pretty simple job. Pretty simple. It will eventually go to zero here at, uh, the way it, uh, the way it works. There it goes. Okay, we'll button it up and uh, we'll give it a test and comparison. Okay, uh, I'm all set up here to uh, test this out again and compare it to the strobe. 
Uh, here's the little bracket I used for uh, mounting, mounting the uh, uh, sensor. I just drilled this out to this hole here to a quarter inch and for the bolt. And I opened this one up to, I think, to 7 sixteenths uh, for the sensor. And bolted it in there. Worked out perfect. Perfect spacing. Uh, you know, and the sensor is adjustable by about any, I mean, like an inch adjustment on the sensor. It's all, quite a bit. So I, then I was able to adjust it to get, a, oh, I don't know. I think I have about 30 thousandths or so clearance on it on, I got from the magnet. So that's what I used. But anyway, uh, I'm all set up here. Uh, the tachometer is turned on and it reads zero. Uh, we have the tach, uh, the strobe here clicking away. So we're gonna crank up the lathe. Okay, oh here, I'll show you this. So, so I made a nice bright yellow mark on here and the object is to get it to stop the, the mark. And yes, I have a fluorescent light. It will not affect this strobe because we are uh, the strobe is bright enough to counteract that, and uh, we will get an accurate reading. Here we we'll get this. The lathe is kind of cold, so it. it gonna warm up here so we'll see uh, where the RPMs end up being there we go I don't know if you can see that but I'm stopping that uh, yellow mark and I'm reading 714 So you can see how this is bouncing around there a little bit, it's right in there, and that's what the, there. I would say a plus or minus one RPM uh, for the most part. It will slow it, slowly laid down to a slower number. See how that maintains there, well, 540. And we'll do this, we'll bring this down. And I'm reading the same, 540 actually, and 540. How cool is that, huh? I love it. We call the project a big success. And then that will go to, it will go to zero here in a moment. It, it like holds the number for a little bit. There it goes. And we have a little switch. We can just turn it off, which is nice. This is a, oops. Uh, I lost the mic. Anyway, uh, it's a good project. If, uh, you know, it's like a few hours project for you. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive. Um, the, the box uh, for me was nothing. I don't know where I ended up with the box. I never, I know I didn't buy it. Uh, and the switch, hmm, I might have bought those. Uh, I had an airplane, a uh, job on an airplane stuff I was doing, and I needed uh, a few switches, so that might have been a leftover on that. So a couple bucks for a switch, and the display, I think it was like $15 off of eBay. Uh, and that's the sensor and the display. So, and then the power supply scavenged, uh, left over from. I think it was an old maybe printer. It was a Canon power supply. So they, you, you can use a varying uh, voltage. I don't know I'm exactly as I remember. It's anywhere from probably, you know, like six volts up to maybe 24 volts. I mean, it's the varying, the voltage range that you can use with that setup is, is very wide. Uh, 
this is only 8.4 volts, a 9 volt one, a 12 volt one. They all would have worked. Uh, so anyway, fun little projects uh, like that are always good. And th these are great enhancements, for, especially for your lathe and your mill. Uh, so uh, get out there and do something pretty cheap. You could use a cardboard box. A shoe box would work. You know, but uh, a metal box is a little nicer. <laughs> anyway, uh, you guys, thanks for watching. Uh, this was a good little uh, project here for the afternoon. So, thanks. I took a... I decided to add a tray, I should say. I uh, took a, a reject drawer uh, that I had that I had... It wasn't the, quite the right size uh, when I redid my kitchen. And uh, so I uh, cut it out a little bit here, a couple holes there, put a little shelf in the back here for the tack. And uh, the bolts from the cover of the gearbox, I just replaced them with some longer bolts, bolted it right down. So I've got four bolts. And uh, I just reused the. Uh, uh, chuck wrench rack it was with a lay that I'll probably redo that because it's backwards uh, has the four jaw key in the front and I usually use the three jaw most of the time so uh, I'm going to redo something there but anyway there's a little add on to the project today other than the tack so uh, came out really nice and uh, be able to keep our tools up there safe they can't fall out got a lip all the way around and two inches, two, two and a half inch tall sides, so nice and safe. Uh, if you do keep your tools up there, um, it is a good idea to have something, some type of retention uh, tray. Uh, if something falls in your chuck uh, when it's running, it can be a nasty little thing. So uh, just a safety thing there, but uh, thought I add this on. Thanks.